everything is romantic ah oh. Is my bed made? No. Is my shirt wrinkled? Yes. Do I have my glasses on? No. Are we gonna be listening to the Brat Remax album? Yes. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. My name is Beth, if you are new here and I like to talk about music. And today we are going to be listening to the Brat Remix album. It is technically called Brat and it's completely different but also still Brat, which I am loving the entire vibe of her marketing for this album, I must say. It is one of the best marketing campaigns for any album I have seen in a hot minute. I love how she's kind of playing on the, the irony of it all, right? If I was listening to it on my own, to be honest, the only remixes I would probably check out would be the ones featuring Ariana Grande and Caroline Polachek. But I thought this was a unique opportunity to explore features from a variety of different artists because most of these artists are artists that I do not currently listen to. So I thought this was something different, something fun. Um, you guys did vote in the poll that I put up saying that you wanted my reaction to it. So I figured we would just experience it together. I'm actually really excited to experience this album again because I have listened to it, you know, but I'm not like, I'm not having a brat summer. I'm gonna be fully honest, I'm having a Madonna summer. And that's just, a, I'm on a different trajectory right now, but it is a really good album. I would say I've gone back the most to the singles and then Girl So Confusing, Apple. Apple has been like my number one on the album. I feel like the slower songs, like so I, I think about it all the time. I haven't gone back to those as much just because with the really upbeat songs, I feel like that's usually the mood I'm in when I listen to the album is like, let's freaking go. So I don't typically listen as much to the slower songs, but I really love those songs when I first listen. But yeah, I'm excited to get into it. I've had everything is romantic stuck in my head all damn day. I don't know why, cause actually I don't love that song. I haven't listened to it a lot, but I've had it stuck in my head all day. I'm super excited for the Caroline Polachek feature, you already know, and Ariana Grande. The only tracks I've heard so far are guests featuring Billy. Eilish, Girl So Confusing featuring Lord, which I reacted to both of those. And then on my own, I did check out Von Dutch featuring Addison Ray. So I'm excited. Let's get into it. The first track is 360 featuring Robin and Young Lean. Robin is an artist that I've never listened to, but people tell me to listen to all the time. Young Lean is an artist that I have not even heard of. So get me into the party mood, Charlie, because I need it. Jesus Christ on a plastic sign. I'm gonna have to take a minute to get into it. We all wanna sound like me, all wanna be like me. Dress so fresh and so clean. Rock with the diamonds on the sleeve. Breathing in the Stockholm breeze, get with rubbing on the beat. Hey, yo, we're rubbing on the beat. Sweet. Cameras flashing at the scene. We're rubbing and Charlie. Pull up to the party. Three white lines, but the lime in the Bacardi. I is Robin a guy? Or is Young Lean doing that feature? I, I don't know what's happening. I did not expect it to come that immediately. I was like, I gotta settle in. <laughs> She's talking her shit. Pull up to the party. Three white lines, but the lamb in the Bacardi. I can in the flesh. Mayor of my town, David Beckham in the northeast. Get up, darling. London calling. When I go prancing, here I go all in hate. Oh, this is Robert. Killing this shit since 1994. Got everybody in the room. Push up on it, right in your ear. I got the super song. Oh, this is totally different. Elvis moment, push up on it, right over. I really love this part. Sonic. <laughs> we got that mansion, castle, got that pets, got that really very special language. No one understands it. Three child stars out here doing damage. Three child stars out here doing damage. Is Charlie XCX a child star? I don't recall her having that background, but I also am not the expert. And have email now, my lyrics on your booby. I didn't even have email now, my lyrics on your booby. Poetry. You know you wanna dream like me, wanna be like me, but it's not as easy as it seems. The little camera flashes, I love the practical sound effects. This is a to totally different song. Like she said, brat, and it's completely different, but also still brat. Supersonic push up on it, right? I love that part. I got the supersonic starship coming. I'm in my Elvis moment, push up on it right over there. This flow is insane. Family had that drinks. Action, got that lights, camera, action, got that mansion, castle. It's giving mash. Got that drinks, action, lights, camera, action. Oh 
Oh, I, um, um, um. These really are totally different. I don't know, I had a very limited scope of what this was gonna be. Just because remix album, I think to myself, it's the same song. Maybe the production's a little bit different, a little bit clubbier, but there's like one little feature section at the end and that's basically it. That's my experience with the limited amount of remixes that I've listened to in my life. This is totally different. That was a completely, completely different song. I really liked it, I must say. I thought the flow was really infectious. I don't know, I just liked all the melodies and everything. Don't have that many crazy thoughts, but it was really fun. And I'm excited to keep going and get into maybe some artists that I know more intimately. <laughs> um, okay, the next one is Club Classics. Amazing song featuring BB Tricks, who I have never heard of. I'm gonna have to like get into it. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like. like. <laughs> Kind of dissonant and like dark. When I go to the club, I wanna hit the classics. When I go to the club. Shall we do a little key? Shall we have a little line? Wanna club, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sections intentionally missing. Just five party girl. Humping that little push my hat back, 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 back. When I'm humping that, push my hat back. This has this like cutting edge to it. Kind of like sympathy is a knife. It has that like cutting ferocity behind it. <sighs> I don't know. I love sympathy is a knife. I love how that song evoked the feeling of being cut with a knife, but I'm not loving the production of this. It's just not really my thing, I think. DDXCX is a classic automatic. Tranquila, aunque la oficina básico. Brad, Brad, el club. No, never go home, don't sleep, don't. When I go to the club, I want to hear the classics. The second I'm ready to like for the beat to drop, she just switches it up. I like this part a lot. I love the end section. Like by the end, I'm like, let's just keep this vibe going. Overall, I didn't love that remix. It was very like unpredictable and all over the place, which I get is like the entire point. But I think it was just a little bit jarring to hear it first. I felt like a bunch of knives were attacking me. And I don't know how I felt about that. Uh, cool little section from BB Tricks. She's a Spanish artist. It's all about the atmosphere. It's all about the energy. We're in the brat atmosphere, okay? The next one is called Sympathy is a Knife featuring Ariana Grande. I'm so excited for this. This is very unexpected in my opinion. I don't really know how they're gonna come together on a track. They have just about the most opposite vibes that you could ever have. So I'm really curious to see how they're gonna work together on this track. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's a knife on you know the waiting for you to choke. Challenges of fame. And somebody says, Charlie, I think you've totally changed. I always talk about this, so I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but her lyrics will just cut you out of nowhere. She will just cut you, stab you with a really vulnerable, intense lyric. Exactly like she says in this song. I love this. It's a knife on somebody says they like the old me and not the new. True. On top, cause that should be the next step, cause they wanna see you fall mm -hmm. to the bottom. They're, yeah! That should be the next step, cause they wanna see you fall. It's common to think the top is the best place to be, but in reality, you're just waiting for the moment when it's all gonna go away. It's a nice one. I'll set the It's a nice one. <laughs> this remix. It's a nice one. Ariana, your vocals, girl, what is this? This is weird for me, you know, she is not the type of artist you would expect to be on this track, having that auto-tune. Mm, I don't know how I feel about it yet, I guess. But I like what she's saying. I think it's super true. You know, these celebrities that can't even leave their houses without getting hate for being fat or whatever the case may be. Um, and what's ironic is most of them are like an average weight. And it's just so weird. Like you wonder who are these people who just sit at home and prey on the downfall of celebrities and make fun of their weight. Like who are these people? Am I seeing them out at the store? Get a hop. That's not this. 
sun gets cheap. Cause it's annoying when you're finally on top. It's time to take the next step because they want to see you fall, fall, fall. It's a knife. Interesting. This is interesting. <laughs> All this expectation. <laughs> Why am I like? Oh. Let her do the root canal. Just give her a minute. <laughs> Charlie X C X. Um, <sighs> overall, I love that remix. The lyrics were super real, obviously updated um, to be even more honest about fame and like the expectations and the problems that can come along with it. And people will make the argument like, you chose to be famous. And it's like, yeah, they chose to be famous, but just because you choose fame doesn't mean that you want or deserve any of that shit. As far as Ariana's part, I don't know really how I felt about it. It was just super jarring to have that like very cutting production, very like slicing sounds and have that with Ariana's voice that was very soft and very angelic. I know the contrast was probably intentional and it was really cool. You know, in theory, I think it's a really cool idea, especially because Ariana also has a reputation for being a certain way and, and people say things about her a lot. So I think it was fitting to have her on the track. I just think, I don't know that I loved her voice on that particular track and that particular production. But the next one is called I Might Say Something Stupid featuring the 1975 and John Hopkins. The 1975 is actually one of my favorite bands ever. Um, I haven't listened to them in a minute. Ooh. ASMR. It's like TV static. I haven't listened to this track in a minute. Was there piano originally? I should know these things, but. Pull the knife out. Pull the knife out? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I could say something small. His voice. <laughs> I just. And the 1975, she's engaged to the to the I guy. Might oh, say so something stupid. stupid. <laughs> this is so jarring after the last track, obviously. Oh my gosh, it's so quiet compared to the last track. I think it works well as a contrast because it almost feels like this reflective time where you can kind of think about what she just said in the previous track. It sounds like rain, but it's just static. like teasing things I get so cold I'm floating I'm floating <laughs> I don't know if I belong here anymore this is so slow it's like every note every word is drawn out it's very peaceful and reflective I'm <laughs> just like taking a minute. <laughs> Feels like you're on the water and it's just really calm. Draw in your house in a tie. Put in my skin into anything. The 1975, I just think, makes every song good. Like, not that this song was bad before, but there's just something about it. When they put their spin on it, it just tugs at my heartstrings. But it's still Charlie. It's still Charlie fied. I feel like without those little random bursts of her, it would sound kind of like a song by another artist. Like, I wouldn't necessarily know it was Charlie XCX, but because of those little bursts of her personality coming through, it's Charlie Fied. I'm famous, but not quite. This part. Thinking of giving up everything. My friends been through this before, yeah. It happens to lots of guys. Medicine makes him a problem. I'm famous, but I'm not quite. 
voices together got me. There's something like so impactful about them singing together. It's just beautiful. Medicine makes him a problem. I'm famous, but I'm not quite. I don't know why I love that so much. I wish the section with their voices together had been longer simply because they sounded so good together. But this is genuinely one of the most raw albums, story-wise, lyrics-wise, that I think has come out in a while. This is so real and raw and like she is literally holding nothing back. And I feel like the remix is she's almost even more honest somehow, which I didn't think was possible. It's just adding layers to the songs that weren't there before. And I really respect that. I really, really respect the fact that this is not just like a remix album that has like one little tiny part that's new about every song. This is literally different. This is different songs, but it's still Brat. She had the perfect title for the album. Rat in my house in LA, thinking of giving up everything. Now I'm watching what I'm saying. These interviews are so serious. So if you didn't know, Maddie Healy does have a controversial interview that went around um, that people have taken issue with, myself included. You know, I didn't like what he said in the interview. And I think maybe that's what he's referring to in that section. My friends went through this before. Like, I'm not the first to kind of be put under a microscope like this. Medicine makes him a problem. I'm famous, but I'm not quite. Yeah, it, the whole song is kind of about not, like feeling like you don't belong and like you're part of something, but you're not. You have one foot in the door of fame, but you're also not entirely in it um, as much as some other people are. But the next one is called Talk Talk featuring Troy Sivan. Troy Sivan, I love his older music. Really, really love uh, The Neighborhood, The Blue the blue Neighborhood, as well as his EP, In a Dream. Absolutely adore that project from start to finish. Um, and he had that song with Charlie as well, 1999, which I'm not gonna lie, I really loved it. I really regret not going to the Brat tour. It did come to my city and I was like, why didn't I go? And I really don't know. Oh. <laughs> Is that her? Hay una fiesta en mi casa. Vengan. Será muy divertido. She said, I'm having a party. Fun fact, I think her and Troy met at a party. So maybe that's a callback to where they met. You're leaving things in my head. Hmm. Because we talk that talk, yeah, we talk all night, my baby. Talk to me in French, talk to me in Spanish, talk to me in your own. Now we go back to my place. Okay, here's the plan. I wanna fly you out to Amsterdam. I gotta go to her to fuck you in. I wanna come see you, me. We can pop our shit to Charlie. Come me and punch, 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 punch. Let her to fuck you in. I wanna. I love that production. It's little. Dua Lipa. Austin is crazy. Let's do it again. Shall we go back to my place? Why was Dua Lipa in there? <laughs> that was a good one too. I don't have a ton of thoughts about it. Um, it's it's my skip. It is one of my skips on the album. Simply because it's so repetitive. It's just the talk talk over and over again. But I really liked Troy on it. I really liked his verse. It was just a really fun remix. That's all I have to say. The next one is called Von Dutch, AG Cook Remix featuring Addison Rae. I did listen to this when it came out, but it was a while ago. So we can listen again and refresh Refresh my memory. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> Fun Dutch cult classic, but I still pop. Every time my track drops, you're jealous. While you're sitting in your dad's basement, bet you're disappointed. Fun Dutch cult classic, but I still pop. Pack the LV cases, I've got some revenue. I guess it makes sense, cause I'm just living bad, yeah. So much as um, she's talking her shit, you know? She's just like, I'm gonna get so real about, you know, fame, the industry. It's so interesting. This is like a window into, you know, the world of fame and Hollywood in a way. The auto tune's crazy. Just to look at my pics, my tight dress and red lips. I know you want it. I'm just living that life. Linked with Addison on Melrose. Bought some cute clothes and wrote this in the studio. I found Dutch cult classic, but I still pop. Oh. I love the change of that, but I still pop. Life. <laughs> Yeah, I saw 
Charlie's Instagram story where she was like, Addison screamed on the track. <laughs> Addison. <laughs> Oh my god. There's like vocal fry. And then they go online like, just kidding, I hate you. Mm. <laughs> Every line is tea. Cause we're just living that life. About the industry. Cute. You know, with that one, I feel like it was just her and Addison in a room having a little fun time. A very intense one. Toward the end, it was just like, what am I experiencing right now? I did enjoy it. I enjoyed that remix overall. Probably not one that I personally would go back to, but I enjoyed it. I think Addison had some fun lines in there. Again, she kind of had this nice contrast with Charlie's voice because Charlie has just a completely different tone than her. She has this very like girly, you know, kind of smooth tone. And so they complimented and contrasted one another really nicely. But the next one is one that I have been super excited about hearing. The most excited along with Ariana. Uh, we have Everything is Romantic featuring Caroline Polachek, who's someone that I have discovered on my channel who is a really cool, unique artist. They have a very similar kind of energy and, and vibe to their music. So I think, you know, we'll get something good here. Fall. Fallen. That's so Caroline. <laughs> Fall in love. Also, my intro. My intro's Caroline. If you didn't know, now you know. Fall in love again. And again and again. Fall in love 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 again and again. And you don't know if it's auto-tune or if she's just doing that with her voice, because she has insane talents with her voice. Walk to the studio soaking wet. It kept tag on a bus stop sign. We're getting the Caroline vocals. Oh my gosh, this is like so far mainly her and I'm living for it. It's like a cover. Her voice is so unique. It's so different than anything out there. And we have a totally different description of her location. Instead of Jesus Christ on a plastic sign, it's a cab tag on a bus stop sign. So just a different atmosphere entirely. Kind of gives me New York energy. Hey girl, what's up? How you been? I think I need your advice. It's crazy. I love that. I love that take on the song being like, everything, is it still romantic? Or have I kind of lost that romance? It's like you're living the dream, but you're not living your life. I love the back and forth and they're like talking on the phone to each other. I really like this remix. This whole freaking remix album. Fall. layering I love the back and forth it's so cool to hear them together <laughs> interesting it's like the romantic energy is kind of coming and going throughout the song oh I liked that one a lot just the differences in the lyrics being more real and more raw um, and kind of giving an, a different dimension to the song and Caroline's voice I mean it's just insane and them together is just insane the next one is called rewind featuring blade blade never heard of them <laughs> it's so high-pitched kind of 
juvenile, childlike. Sometimes I just wanna rewind. This is another one of my skips. <laughs> it makes me nostalgic though. Maybe I need a reality check. Sometimes no, I just gotta say less. Stress I'm under pressure in my head. Wanna see my face all up in the press when I don't. Sometimes I get a little depressed. Uh -huh. LA makes me so competitive. She keeps going back to the lyric. I'm under stress, I'm under pressure. She says, wanna see my face all up in the press when I don't. Sometimes I get a little bit depressed. It's the irony of like, she doesn't want to like do something wrong to get into the press but she also wants people to be talking about her. This is uh, just real. I'm in the hills perfectly still, the sun is shining in my yeah. room. His voice is so nonchalant, kind of mumbling the words. Whoa. My brain's gonna explode. <laughs> Kind of like radio voice effect at the end. Yeah, that one's never been my favorite song to begin with. And the remix didn't make me like it all that much more. Um, I did appreciate like the honesty and the lyrics for sure. But yeah, the feature, I don't know. His voice was very like nonchalant and chill. And while there's nothing inherently wrong with that, I just didn't really connect with it. Probably not a remix that I would revisit. The next one is So I featuring A.G. Cook. I will say this was one of my number one favorites when the album first dropped. And and I haven't gone back to it as much as the others just because it is so heavy and sad when you think about, you know, the meaning of the song. Um, it's still like a beautiful song, probably what I would consider one of the best on the album, but it hasn't ended up being like the one that has the most replay value for me. But I'm excited to hear the remix and see if it's still gonna be kind of a slower song or what the vibe is gonna be. Is that a theremin? <laughs> now I want to think about all the good times First met on the outskirts of Stockholm All your things in a black suitcase First day main room room in the basement Now I want to think about all the good times Oh, so she's explaining how she met Sophie I'll set track, take a stage to the party Now I want to think about all the good times First time I ever felt alive on stage In Texas, in matching latex That's as cool as I'm ever gonna feel Hmm, it's reflective And it's more beautiful now I want to think about all the good times Me and Neji on Mulholland Now I want to think about all the good times One big smile crack the whole world open Sipping green juice at King So Shoots Off Every single track so far she's added like a totally new dimension to the song through the remix and that impresses me so much because with remixes again I feel like it's usually not that exciting or even not that different like sometimes you'll have a remix that sounds almost identical to the original song and it's like we're not remixing anything like we're not changing anything this on the other hand is true remixes truly adding a dimension and a layer and an amazing meaning to each song that's totally new. Like in this one, she's kind of reflecting on how her and Sophie met and like the good times that they had together. You know, it kind of has that, that bittersweet edge to it still, but it's more club friendly. It's a little bit more upbeat. She probably wanted to make it in the style that Sophie would make her music. I don't know, but She's really doing something with this album that most remix albums or most remixes don't do. Took her shoes off, ran around barefoot, played that song we made that day. Talking on Zoom in 2020, red hair brushed out, sat back home. My ex-boyfriend played your sound at that moment, really changed my life. <laughs> this is really experimental, like she's just playing around with a lot of different sounds. I wonder if it is inspired by Sophie's music style. Oh. It's like no and now. me under some sort of trance some sort of hypnotic vibe <laughs> it's like voodoo is she saying the word voodoo because this feels like voodoo she's not saying voodoo but still <laughs> Oh, 
Um, I'm surprised I ended up liking that one as much as I did. The second half of the song just really got me into that like clubby, trancey atmosphere. Um, for the first half, did not like the production right away. And so I thought I was gonna hate it, but I ended up being one of my favorites, I think. Again, the different lyrics and just every song having a different meaning and different intention and like making you think about the lyrics, the original lyrics more deeply because you're getting a new layer to it. It's like you're unraveling an onion or peeling back the layers of an onion and we're getting more layers. Genius. For time's sake, I don't normally do this, but I am going to be skipping Girl So Confusing featuring Lord because I already did a video reacting to it on my channel. So you can go check out that video if you want my initial reaction, but absolutely love that song. Um, I've listened to it a lot. It's been just kind of in my daily rotations. But the next one, Apple, my favorite song on this album, you know, Apple Stands Rise. Apple featuring the Japanese house. I have heard of them, but I've never listened to them. Um, but I'm so excited for this one because this song is just everything. And if you get it, you get it. I've been looking at you so long now, only see me. I don't want her to like ruin the original for me though. It's like love song. So much layering on this album of like the original parts of the song and the new parts. tumultuous relationship again like the remix is making me reconsider the original lyrics Somebody asked me how you doing and I make excuses and I... there's so much layering in these remixes sometimes it's hard to make out what's happening like, sometimes it is a bit too chaotic for my taste but sometimes it really works well it just depends I was so short. The best ones are always the shortest. <laughs> yeah, I did like that one. I really like the Japanese house's voices. It wasn't my favorite remix of the bunch. Like I would definitely always listen to the original over that remix, but the next one is B2B, which is also one of my favorites featuring Tanash. Um, and Tanash, I keep hearing things about. She's making the rounds. Haven't listened to her, but excited to see what she's got. <laughs> oh. She's got that. It always starts and I'm like, where are we? I travel around the world to 15 countries in four days and oh shit, I kind of made it. She has these conflicting feelings about fame. Back to back. These conflicting feelings, fighting each other. Hey Tanache, wanna do this song? Two days later, got the vocals cut. Oh my god, we really blew the fuck up. Now everybody wants what we got. Cause we make boom clap, make them get too on. Did they make boom clap together? Also, that's true, they're both blowing up right now. And when she says everyone wants what we got, I don't know if that's meant to be like braggy, like everyone wants what we've got, or if it's more of a, a negative thing, like everyone wants what we've got, but I don't know if what we got is really worth it. The way my ass look in these jeans, I'm about to throw it back. They wanna be like me, can't even blame them for. She chose good features for these songs. Every feature kind of has its place on the album, right? Like Tanash being someone that's blown up along with Charlie and that kind of relating to the lyrics. Ariana Grande being controversial and that relating to the lyrics. <laughs> I'm dissociating at this point. Um, I like that one okay. I don't know. It wasn't my favorite one that I've heard. I think at this point, my brain's kind of having trouble processing all that I'm hearing. And it's just, I don't know. It's just taking more effort to like get it to click. But the next one is called Mean Girls featuring Julian Casablancas, who I know to be from The Strokes. Ooh. 
totally different. It's kind of a nice change up. I played this game So many diverse, so much diversity in their voices. Mingos, this one's for all my mingos. Mm. <laughs> he has this like grand way of singing. Kind of reminds me of Brendan Urie. Do you hear that rasp? Like she's screaming at the precipice of her voice. She's screaming her lungs out. My brain's being melted right now. <laughs> I didn't like that remix. I really wanted to like his voice, but there was just something about it that like didn't really appeal to me. Um, it had a fun energy, especially toward the front half. I really liked the way it started. It was so different than all the other tracks we've gotten so far. Nice kind of reprieve from like the club heavy energy. Cause for me, like an album like this is a lot, you know, it's a lot of that club heavy sound, but the next one I have been super, super, super curious about. I think about it all the time, one of my favorites on the album, especially lyrically, featuring Bon Iver, Bon Iver, who has worked with Taylor Swift, who has just about the opposite energy of Charlie XCX. So it'll just be interesting to see how they come together. Why do you search your heart? so interesting how you know it's I, I know it's a remix album but like the fact that she brings the old songs in with the new is interesting to me and there's kind of a call and response between the old song and the new song and that's really interesting to me first off you bound to the album Locked into the promo. Next thing, three years have gone by. Yeah. Me and George sit down and try to plan for our there's future. No time for but there's so much guilt involved when we stop working. Because you're not supposed to stop when things start working. No. I found love, baby. But I was scared to run out of time. I think about it all the time. Scared about running out of time. Oh yeah, choosing between a career and a baby. I know I talked about this in my first reaction, but it's just, this is such a deep song. Exactly the same, but I'm older now. And I got even more stress on my body. We had a conversation on the way home. Should I stop my birth control? Cause my career still feels small in the existential scheme of it all. That's interesting that she left that entire part in. I kind of love that because that's like the heart of the song and like one of the most kind of like gut-wrenching lines on the album to me. Oh my gosh, Charlie. Charlie. I'm in a club trance. Another one that when it started, I was like, girl, like, where is this gonna go? Um, and then by the end, I was like, hold up. <laughs> this is a really cool remix. It's one that I don't know that I'd be jumping to go back to again, but uh, there were parts of it that I really liked, especially the end, you know, kind of got me in that club trance. I was just kind of dead to the world. Bon Iver, I mean, he does have kind of that voice that speaks to your soul. Um, okay, <laughs> since I will be skipping guests featuring Billie Eilish again, because I covered it on the channel, 
channel. If you want my reaction, you can go watch my reaction. Um, I'm going to be ending this video with 365 featuring Shy Girl, who I feel like people have told me to listen to. I think I've heard like one of her songs, but I don't really remember what it was. So this will be interesting to hear. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be this intense. Is this EDM? Like, would you consider this music EDM? When I'm in the club, yeah, I'm loving that. Because I don't listen to EDM, so I'm just curious if this, like, you know, is categorized as that. <laughs> Three, six, five, party girl. Three, six, five, party girl. Gonna Too hot when I sweat, just lick me. Touch and squeeze and the baseline hits me. Are you gonna ride me? Hotter than the BPM beat match beat. Yeah, I'm not the hot seat straight yet. These remixes are so chaotic. Like, the minute I think I know where it's going, it'll just completely switch up. No one ever go home, don't see, don't. Three, six, five, party girl. 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 <laughs> that was an intense one. Uh -uh. Not now, Billy. It is way too late for me to be up right now. Um, but that was an intense one to end on. Not a song that I would go listen to again. Not a song that really was my thing. But um, yeah, if you're into that, that's totally cool. But very intense, very chaotic. Um, I feel like as this album went on, it got more and more intense and chaotic. I don't know. Maybe that's just because she got more experimental throughout. Maybe it's just like, I'm not accustomed to this music. And so it was a lot for me to take in. But yeah, I mean, needless to say, this is a different energy for me. This is something different for me. And so I'm shocked that I enjoyed this album as much as I did. That's not to say there weren't remixes that I could have done without or that I felt like I preferred the original because there definitely were. But overall, I thought this was such a cool remix album and I, she just added a new dimension and a new layer to every single song. And she had some really cool features and I think she really chose the artist well. Because again, every artist she chose kind of had a connection to what she was talking about and I thought that was really cool. Some of them were just like her friends, which was also fun. But I really enjoyed listening to this and, and checking this out. And there are some remixes on here that I would probably go listen to again. Uh, to be honest, if I wasn't filming a video, I probably would have just checked out like certain tracks from the remix list. So I'm really glad that I did a video on this because it forced me to listen to all the tracks and there were deeper meanings and deeper, you know, connections to the songs that I got out of each song. And if I had only gone back to certain tracks, I wouldn't have known how wildly different all of these remixes were and that she unveiled more about the lyrics, you know, through the remixes. And my favorite part of Brat is the lyrics. I know a lot of people are like, no girl, it's just about the club atmosphere. And that's totally fine if that's your thing. But for me, I just love the lyrics of this album. She is so transparent about what fame has been like for her. And I think it's just really refreshing in an industry where a lot of stuff is swept under the rug and not really talked about. And it's so impactful that she made an album like this. I do think the standouts for me were Everything is Romantic featuring Caroline, Sympathy is a Knife featuring Ariana, but I do listen to both of them. So Maybe that's biased. Girl So Confusing featuring Lord and Guest featuring Billie Eilish will always be favorites of mine. Yeah, those are my favorites right now. I feel like I, they're very biased because I listen to all those artists. So thank you so much for joining me on this journey as always. And thanks especially for watching my reaction to Charlie XCX because I know, you know, I'm not like the uh, hyper pop EDM person. So this is outside my wheelhouse. This is outside of my typical like commentary and what I feel like I do best. So I appreciate you being here on this journey with me and just experiencing her wild ride of music with me because it's always a fun time and there's always just a lot to unpack. So thank you so much and I will see you guys very soon for the next video. Bye.